We've just found this really amazing animatronic tail on Thingiverse. It was designed by Pedro de Oro in 2011 and he put a link to a video of it in action and I'll link that in the description below. So it's powered by an Arduino and looks like it uses two pieces of elastic line and two pieces of nylon line with a servo. So Paul's going to print out the parts for this. We've got eight sections of the animatronic tail printed out now. And you've just put some Ninja Flex through for the time being to see how it's going to look. Mm, but I think we'll probably use elastic cord. I didn't expect it to be so huge. <laughs> it's really big. Uh, how many centimetres would you say it's going to end up? So there's another three sections like this to go on. Yeah. And then there's obviously the servo mounting bracket and the servo which goes here. But another three sections will complete the length of the tail. Oh, I would say about um, 20 centimetres. About 20, 20 centimetres. 25 centimetres. Paul's put some nylon thread through now as well as the elastic. It's just pulling on one side. And I've got no tension in the elastic because I can't hold it in. Possibly. It certainly moves now. I can't operate it properly without the servo. Well, it certainly moves, doesn't it? So, Paul, you've printed out some bits and pieces for mounting the servo now. Yeah, well, the original uh, parts that we downloaded, first of all, didn't fit the servo, the drive, um, disc so I had to print another one in black and uh, the rest of the components that were meant to hold the servo were printed in three parts and they weren't a great fit for this particular servo so I decided to uh, redo uh, a one part piece that replaces all these. So you've done a one part piece that replaces all of those, all those pieces. And, and we've replaced that white disc as well. Right but you've not printed those out yet? Only the disc at the moment. So what are you doing next? So <clears throat> this disc goes on top of the servo, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also got to go in, in here Yeah. It'll be fixed. So we're using some miniature nuts and bolts, one and a half mil right. to fix this disc, small disc, the larger disc. So Paul, you've designed and you've printed out the bracket now that replaced those four or five parts. Yeah, we've got a one piece servo bracket. So the servo is going to sit in that cutout there, It'll be fixed in. So the cords are going to pass uh, through those two holes when they're being cleared out properly. And then it's just a matter of assembling the tail and tensioning it upright. Now you were talking about adding something, some little 3D printed uh, yeah, it's parts. Going to, it's going to be difficult to get the elastic tension right. I'm not sure how critical it is. Uh, it's difficult to get it right with knots because it's you can't really determine accurately where the knot's going to fall so we we're thinking of printing some little uh, almost like washers to slide over the elastic a tight fit to slide them down to get the right tension and fix them with a drop of super glue so paul you've got the bracket attached to the servo now mm -hmm. you've got the mounting on there yeah you've got the nylon cord yeah running through and you put it on this um, metal base to yeah. keep it all stable. Four kilo sheet of steel just to keep it all from moving about. And you've put some... Teflon tubing and the nylon cord runs through it. it oh helps, yeah. Uh, helps reduce the friction. And you put a little stud here. Yeah, that's the... Uh, locks both pieces of nylon cord into the, uh, into the wheel. And you've got it wired up to a battery box and a servo tester. Yes, it should really be an Arduino running a program, but it's... Uh, You're just testing it out. Just It's quicker to use a servo tester and use the... Uh, I'll turn it on. And that should, uh, when all the tails studied up, we can see how it's performing, how it moves. So, Paul, you've got it all threaded up. Yeah. 
And you put these little 3D printed uh, parts on. Yeah, they're just like uh, thick washers that you can crimp on and super glue, so it helps to help you adjust the tension and then lock it in place. So you're ready to switch it on and we'll see it in action. Okay. Oh my goodness, I wasn't expecting it to move so fast. Oh yeah, and it's a. Uh... And it's not restricted by the table, you can see it flicking around much more like we saw on the original guy's video. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's quite lifelike, isn't it? In its movements, yeah. <laughs> That's life. So, Paul, you've now got it powered by an Arduino. Yep, yeah, uh, with a small program written by, not me, but the uh, inventor, designer of the uh, this tail. So, this is it on some pieces of paper that were sticking on the carpet. The program that's controlling it has got a little bit more randomness than the servo tester. Right. Yeah. It does have more randomness to it, doesn't it? Mm. The side to side screen varies as does the time. Yeah. So you've got it running from the program that the guy wrote running off an Arduino. Yeah. Um so what's the next step, Paul? Next step I suppose would be to scale this time because we think it's too big for the size model should produce. So, Paul, you've started working on version two of the tail. You've reduced this by 50%, but we're both surprised at how tiny it is. Yeah, it's only got five segments in it at the moment, and it's about as long as three segments on the, the original. original. Mm. You've done a new design, haven't you? Yeah, instead of relying on uh, flat surfaces between each segment, as in the white one here, we've uh, opted for a ball and cup arrangement. It's, it's got a smoother action. When I say smoother, the, the segments tend to um, all rotate rather than rotating at just one mm. point. So you haven't used elastic in this? It's nylon fishing line. Yeah. A length of a nylon fishing line when you start getting around the six inch mark plus it's got some elasticity to it. And it's also strong so we can use it for securing the segments together. So, Paul, you've done a redesigned bracket for this version 2 of the tail. So, this new bracket looks really neat. It's a lot smaller than the original design, a lot shorter. Yep, we've scaled it down uh, to be appropriate to this size of tail because the first one was really over-designed anyway. And you've also threaded up the fishing wire in this tail. Yeah, we put the two wires in to keep all the joints in tension, which was difficult because the um, 50% scale has made everything so much smaller. It's only got two pieces of line in it at present, not the two pieces that operate it. Yeah, it's got the two tension pieces in and we'll be threading through the two control pieces once we've got the disc for the servo. So you're making a new disc as well? Yes, because this disc, uh, this original disc, I think, on this servo will probably uh, pull too much cord through and drive the tail too hard. So, Paul, you've got the tail working now. Yeah. Got the battery box. Battery box, yeah. And got a servo tester. Servo so tester. So, you, you've connected up to the servo tester mm -hmm. rather than an Arduino this time. Yeah, because I've got more control over it initially and it doesn't sweep the tail too far left and right. And you've printed out a, a smaller pulley because much it, smaller. It, it doesn't need to pull as much. With the tail being smaller, it doesn't need to pull as much on the cords left and right to move it. So you're going to give us a demo then? Yeah. <laughs> I, love the, I love the action of it. And when I like how when you hold it, sort of like if you hold it at the base, it's just the end that moves. Mm. Yeah, I really like it. If it had a latex skin and you made the latex a little bit thicker around the base, it would help restrict it and spread the movement over the tail. So, before I end this video, I just want to answer a few queries we've had. 
So be nasty if we can share the files and thingiverse. For That's the files are the servo brackets, the mm. tail bits and the, maybe the puller, yeah. Mm. But the thing is, um, this is still under development, isn't it, Paul? It is, yeah. There are improvements to be done on the tail yet, and the um, the bracket can be shrunk down some more, and then perhaps encased in a box. So, um, yeah, and also, it's... you're thinking of moving to a smaller servo. That's because right. Yeah. This this is um, you don't really need a servo as big as this, do you? We don't this really need the tail? power. No, but driving this size tail, that's that's quite right. Yeah. So and if you I'm, use a smaller servo, you're going to be designing a different yeah, bracket. Yeah, but I'm quite uh, happy to put these things on th the Thingiverse uh, when uh, what we've done. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I mean we do we we are we do intend to share yeah. all of it. Mm -hmm. It's just that at the moment it's still under development, it is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And the other question we've been asked is, if you can, if we can do a video sort of showing how this all goes together like putting it together yeah but again you're going to move on to a smaller servo aren't you yeah but i mean roughly the servo is just held in with four screws uh, as you can see in, into the servo brackets which holds the uh, servo firmly and um, the pulley is mounted on to the uh, servo drive disc so the videos up to this point on this video they've all been like little shorts that i've been doing mm -hmm. as you've um been working on this and then i put those all together so we've not sort of gone into detail about how you construct it you know showing assembly yeah um but we will do that in the future long yeah. video mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there's still some improvements to be done on the tail. Um, the ball joints uh, have not been polished. It's just that they come off a 3D printer and mm. uh, they are a bit sort of like uh, gritty, uh, for want of a better word. So those could be improved by polishing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's still experimental at, at this point. Yeah. We were a bit surprised, actually, the amount of interest that we got because we're always, like, trying to make things and get like a handful of people who are interested yeah um but not much interest and not people really want them to to share stuff and to do the same project themselves so we we're a bit taken aback to be honest but we will do a future video where we show it more in depth like the construction of the thing once you get um a working model that you're happy with yes that's right so we will be doing a, a latex skin for this though because the, the oh yeah yeah, yeah i mean this is this is well. functioning well enough for us mm. to go to the trouble to make a latex skin mm. and then see how that performs but well that's that that's another thing isn't it i mean we don't even know how that's going to perform with the latex, with the latex skin, skin though yeah. we don't. that's mm. right so we're going to be doing that in the next video but that's it for this video folks thanks for watching as always and see you next time